only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Good morning, Dan and Amy, uh, best-selling author and uh, documentarian. Dinesh D'Souza is out with a new film, Death of a Nation. It's coming to a theater near you. I think it's uh, already showing at River East in my neighborhood. Uh, So I have to check that out. Uh, I've always enjoyed Dinesh D'Souza's work back to his first book. I don't know. uh, Gosh, it's got to be 25 years ago, uh, Illiberal Education. Uh, Death of a Nation asks the question, can we save America a second time? And uh, if you've seen the trailer or some of the uh, marketing, it's got like a half a face Lincoln, half a face Trump. So yeah, it's pretty cool. That's the this, this, hearkening uh, back to the Civil War. Uh, for perhaps some insight into the answer to that question, we're pleased to be joined by the filmmaker himself, Dinesh D'Souza. Dinesh, thanks for being with us again. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, it's a great pleasure. Good to be on the show. So um, can we save America a second time? Um, uh, explain why uh, you uh, framed the Trump presidency uh, in the context of uh, the Civil War and Lincoln's ascension. Well, I do that because a lot of people compare the Trump era now to the Reagan era, and they you know, wistfully pine for getting the Reagan era of gentlemen's politics back. Uh, But alas, we don't live in that era anymore. The waters are really roiled politically. Uh, Let's remember that with Trump, you have a Republican president, (laughs) an outsider, uh, who won unexpectedly. And in a sense, all hell has broken loose ever since. Uh, The Democrats simply can't accept the result of the election. And so all kinds of craziness, Trump is a racist, Trump is a fascist, all these charges flying around to delegitimize. Uh, Trump and the conservatives. Now, the last time this happened was in 1860. Uh, A Republican president, Lincoln, won narrowly and unexpectedly. Um, Once again, all hell broke loose. Once again, the rival party happened to be the same party. The Democrats said, we won't accept this. The Northern Democrats, some of them called for Lincoln to be assassinated. Uh, The Southern Democrats decided to break up the country. So Lincoln, I think, if he lived today, would understand these royal political waters because the political waters were even more royal in his time. But That's it, why this is an appropriate analogy. But, but the underlying issue of slavery, um, what, what's, what is that comparable to today? Well, here's where, this is actually even more interesting because Lincoln defined slavery as you work and I eat. In other words, Lincoln said slavery is a kind of theft. One guy does the work, another guy steals his labor. And Lincoln said that this is the credo, not just of the South, but of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party stands for theft. And he said the Republican Party stands for the opposite. You know, so in Lincoln's words, the hand that makes the corn has the right to eat the corn. So for Lincoln, the Republican Party is you get to keep the fruits of what you make. Now, what's incredible is that although a lot of people on the left today say, oh, the party switched sides, oh, Lincoln would be a progressive today, in reality, you can see that this great Lincolnite distinction between the two parties is completely valid today. Even now, the Democrats stand for you work, I eat. And even now, the Republicans stand for the hand that makes the corn has the right to eat the corn. So I'm not claiming that slavery is going on today in the, in the old sense, but I am claiming that the Democrats still kind of run these ethnic plantations. they got black ghettos, Latino barrios, Native American reservations, and life on those places is actually terrible. And yet the Democratic Party keeps maintaining them in a kind of uh, subdued subjugation. So I think Lincoln would recognize that even though times have changed, Lincoln, with his insight, would be able to see there's a continuity between the old Democratic Party and the Democratic Party today. And you uh, propose the premise, if you think Trump is a white supremacist, you should talk to a real one. And in the film, you interviewed uh, Richard Spencer. What was that like? I mean, this interview with Spencer is worth going to the movie uh, alone for because it's mind-blowing. Ever since the Charlottesville rally of last year, and by the way, it's coming back uh, this weekend, uh, the media has portrayed these white nationalists as right-wingers. They're on the right. Gee, look over there. you got a white supremacist in a Trump hat. And so what I do in the book, Death of a Nation, I look at all the leading white supremacists, one after the other, and I show that all of them are deeply anchored in the left, including the main organizer of the Charlottesville rally, Jason Kessler, who was an Obama activist. So think about this. How does an Obama activist become a white supremacist? It makes no sense. But there was no effort to look at this, to dig into it, 
In the movie, I look at Richard Spencer, who's the most famous white nationalist in America. It becomes stunningly clear to the audience in a very few minutes that far from being on the right, this guy is firmly on the left. He's a progressive. It comes out of his own mouth. I'm a progressive, end quote. And uh, Spencer talks about the fact that his favorite presidents are all Democrats. He doesn't like Reagan. He thinks our rights don't come from God. They come from the state. Uh, he basically he wants nationalized health care. So on and on it goes. And I think what's really, uh, what really dawns on the audience is not just that this guy's a left-winger, but that the media, the left-wing media has sold them a bill of goods. They have spun a narrative about Charlottesville that's basically a big lie. And exposing that lie, I think, is very liberating because you begin to realize that, uh, that the truth is a powerful political weapon indeed. Well, and, and uh, so uh, the Democrat socialists of the day, I mean, in terms of where this is going to uh, go one direction or the other in terms of can we save America a second time, the underlying question your film uh, sets for- forth, uh, is that the big fight, the Democrat socialists that have taken over the Democratic Party versus uh, people who believe in free minds and free markets? Right. I mean, remember that the old Nazis were socialists. That was the name of their party, the National Socialist yeah. Party. One, one reason Hitler fought with the communists wasn't because he disagreed with them about socialism. The basic problem was he thought that they were traitors to Germany who were loyal to Moscow. So they were international communists. They're, sorry, they were international socialists, and Hitler was a national socialist. Well, if you look at people like this young woman, Alexander, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, she's a national socialist. I mean, she doesn't want to redistribute America's wealth to Haiti or to India. She wants to redistribute within America. That means she's not an international socialist. She's obviously a national socialist. And, and how much does immigration, uh, illegal immigration, play into this? Uh, we see it going on in Chicago right now where you have uh, the mayor here can't win election, re-election, with the existing population, so he needs to import new voters uh, to, try and, yeah. to try and win that way. And, uh, you, and we have that new city ID card that yes, you can use to, to, register, to, to vote. register to vote. Right. So um, well, how, how much is this, I, a, 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 this part of the, uh, the, the, the battle line? Well, it's an important battle line because, really, I don't think in my lifetime, and I have to think back historically, I don't believe there's a major party that has ever openly advocated lawlessness in this way. I mean, I realize that the Democrats would like to have dead people voting, illegals voting, and so on, change the demographic composition of America. But nevertheless, um, you know, you'd think they'd go about that by proposing changes in the immigration law, trying to get new legislation passed. But the very idea of becoming the party of illegals and essentially, see, to me, I mean, I'm a non-white legal immigrant, and I think that illegal immigration is an insult not just to native-born Americans, but also to legal immigrants. Uh, I have lots of people in India who'd love to come to America. Mm -hmm. They can't swim across the river or jump across the sands. They've got to stand in a very long line. So the illegal immigrant basically saying, I get to cut the line. And the Democratic Party says, you know, we're going to help you do that. And with respect to um, the, uh, the kind of who's going to save America the second time, if you will, uh, just on this issue, you see Republicans and even President Trump being kind of open to the idea of kicking the immigration issue, the border security issue past the midterm elections, don't really want to tackle it. Certainly they don't on the Hill. So wh- how sanguine are you about uh, Republicans and perhaps Republicans under President Trump um, doing the things necessary to turn back the National Socialists? Well, I think Lincoln understood from the beginning that the way that you save America is you shut down the Democratic plantation. And in 1865, the Democratic actual plantation, the old slave plantation, was shut down. But the plantation mentality has continued, uh, continues to this day. Uh, and so I think really going after that, this whole notion of ethnic dependency, of exchanging your vote for a meager provision provided by the Democratic Party. Now, Trump is kind of already on it, but the Republican Party, I think, is, is not on it. And that is the need to basically really go after the black vote, the Latino vote, the Asian American vote, because if Republicans can get 25 percent of the black vote, 40 percent of the Asian American vote, uh, of the Latino vote, the Democratic Party would essentially be finished. Uh, but Republicans need to take their case uh, for ladders of opportunity directly into the inner cities and into the barrios and contrast that with the ropes of dependency that the Democrats are letting down from the top of a very tall building. 
He is Dinesh D'Souza, author of Death of a Nation, uh, many best-selling books, uh, Death, of, Death of a Nation, The Big Lie, uh, many others you should check out. Uh, Death of a Nation, now playing yes. in theaters near you throughout Chicagoland, including theaters near me downtown in Streeterville, and I look forward to seeing it. Dinesh D'Souza, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with the film. If I may say, Death of a Nation movie. Oh, yes. dot com. You plug in your website, boom, it'll tell you where the movie's playing, and please go see it this week. There you go, Death of a deathofanationmovie.com. Thanks for reminding me about the website. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.proanswerline.